Mojito. Look, it's green. It'll make this whole experience better, just like in the book. <laughs> so today's concoction is an English mojito. Yep, because the author of this week's book is British. Really, really British. And uh, it's green. Yep. Which in the book that we read <laughs> is like the happy color. It's the happy yeah, calming it's, color. It's the, it's the one that, you know, you get high off of. So, um, I don't know if we mentioned this, I think we did. The way, the way we do this is we don't discuss this ahead of time. Nope. So it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's like, how did you, it's kind of like a fairy tale curse. Yeah. That we, we can't, we like, if we mention the thing, we can't mention the thing, just so our, our, you know, discussion of the thing is a lot more authentic. Yeah, and uh, this week we definitely had- We haven't discussed the thing. We also have a, um, a policy here on Booze Your Own Adventure that we don't say anything in our reviews that we would not say to the author's face. Because we are writers of a sort, we know how hard it is, and we know how shitty it is when like some two-bit nobody just shows up all like, I'm gonna talk about your thing, person. So today we're discussing shades of gray, in, of an indeterminate number of shades of gray, by Jasper Ford. Mm -hmm. It is a, a dystopian thing written for an adult audience. Yeah. Nella, what did you think of shades of gray? <laughs> the movie Brazil that much. Mm -hmm. This felt like Brazil. I liked it better than Brazil. <laughs> I wouldn't, I would recommend it to people who liked Brazil. Um, I'd read the sequels, but it was definitely a book that um, meandered a lot throughout its world building. And, and the last quarter of the book decided, oh right, we have, we have, we've built up this world, let's get to what's actually wrong with it and why our character should care. Um, also, I'm sure we're gonna talk about female character. <laughs> female, female character. <laughs> this made me never want to read another book again. <laughs> the thing I hated about it was the process of reading the words. Mm. On a concept level, I, if someone had described it to me, I'd be like, okay, that's a book. Mm -hmm. But as I was reading it, I derived no enjoyment from it. It felt like I couldn't remember why I enjoyed reading. <laughs> Period. Wow. Wow. I'm sure Mr. Ford is a lovely person. <laughs> let's, let's, um, let's start with the, the shtick, which is in this dystopian world, which takes place about 500 years after what would be a, our the something that our happened. civilization. We never find out the something that happened. Or right? we haven't found out yet because this Sequel. is what I hated. It's a trilogy. I just wanted a book that ended. And it's about the halfway point I was like, there's no way we can resolve this all in one book. Surely, surely. Oh no, is it? Is it? And then in the last 20 pages, as it rushed to the end, I was like, oh god, here it comes, here it comes. Sequel! Be sure to read more in the next book. But talking about the shtick of the book, that in this uh, dystopian future, society is um, based on people's perceptions of color. So you are a color. You can only see one natural color and then synthetic color is used to great extent. I, when I was in high school, I read Brave New World and I liked it. This was like, if Brave New World didn't have a point, or it did have a point, but the point was like less sophisticated than we get in young adult dystopias. Well, because it's a point that's been done. I, so well, much. yeah, and I was like, every time it would like, I mean, it has a very glib sense of humor, so we can kind of sidestep that yeah. criticism, I guess, sort of, but it still had that underlying tone of like conformity bad, and it's like. <laughs> this came out in 2009. <laughs> 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 this is a little old, you guys. Uh, and, and I was like waiting for it to add to that because it was so boring. And 
And the thing is, usually, like, like Divergent, I gave Divergent a lot of shit. I like Divergent better than this. This is how much I hated this book. Wow. Divergent, the dystopia of Divergent was really kind of not about anything. Like, you could really stretch it and say it's about, like, high school cliques. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't... It was a story first, you know, and I guess any kind of like social commentary was like they, they like w wafted it over the book and said like here's some commentary sort of not really. It wasn't meant to be a commentary. Yeah. So, I mean like I think I still maintain that Divergence not good, but it had a story with tension and yeah. characters. And this and this reminds me of like an io9 review I read of the Bone season where it was like world building for the sake of world building. Mm. And I, I kept imagining like Frank Underwood turning to the camera as the narrator repeatedly <laughs> explained the world to us, like a thing would happen, and then he'd be like, "Oh, well, you know, this swatch is like the da da da," and then we have to do this thing over here in order to get our swatches. And it was just like the most clunky, unnatural world building I can remember. Usually, world building is done with action. Usually, world building is done with a thing that happens, not the narrator constantly over and over to the point of like is this a parody it felt so british <laughs> it did feel really british and like the the elements of the dystopia like it, it felt like a sort of like a buzzfeed article you know you're british if yeah you know like all, all of the elements of the dystopia where people you know there'd be like an uncomfortable thing in the room and yeah. we got to pretend like it's not there because britain you know, like stuff like that. And I was the, like... The hyper politeness. Yeah. <laughs> so it felt very British in that way, but that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. The world building and the way it was done I thought was a bad thing because it was not... I mean, it's sort of like show don't tell. It was so telly. It was maddeningly telly. Mm -hmm. And it's like he could construct a sentence okay and like sometimes slip a joke in there. I liked the risk joke. It was a good one. Good as a stretch. <laughs> and the second the, the main love interest shows up, I was like, uh oh, we got a strong female character on our hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she threatened to punch me. <laughs> I dig that. <laughs> with that, with that nose she has. That nose. She hits people. Yeah. She's not a nice person. Filter. Threatens him constantly, and he's charmed by this, as men are wont to do. I mean, I just, every, every fucking sentence of this godforsaken character, I kept yeah. envisioning like the Kate Beaton strong female character. I, I don't need no man. There's just something about this incredibly weak male lead. <laughs> oh my god, he was such an incredibly weak male lead. I mean, this is like why I hated American Gods. There was no driving tension. He doesn't want anything. And, mm. the, I mean, you're just like, you're reading a book with no driving tension. No. All he, no, it's all about, he just wants to actually win the, the other girl back at home. Like, but that's not but a driving not even... tension. That's like a subplot. Yeah. That's barely a subplot. So there's driving tension not really in the subplot, where he kind of nonchalantly, indifferently kind of likes a girl back home. But he doesn't seem to care about anything. No. And I cannot stand when your protagonist doesn't care about anything. And if your protagonist does not care about anything, your world building had better goddamn well be the most fucking interesting thing imaginable. Mm. Like, I was just sort of thinking, like, if this was written as a YA, she would have been the lead and it would have been from the Grey's perspective, I feel. If you like Brazil and British long, dragging Frank Underwood politeness. turning to the camera and explaining <laughs> everything to you rather than showing no, it. at least Frank Underwood is enjoy is like actually like really super enjoyable when he does that. Exactly. He's Richard the Third. That's why it's worth. <laughs> so How does this have such a high rating on Goodreads? Seriously, if you like Brazil, you'll like this. Because I can see liking this if you like the tone, and tone is like why you read things. Yeah. And, cause as I was reading it, I was just like, my problem was I was, I was just so bored by the world building. I was just like, there's no point to this dystopia. Mm -hmm. And that would be fine if there was a story or a driving tension. Like See. technically, I mean, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even call it a story, it's just like, one guy putters around for a few days and he then discovers it a all thing. in the last fourth of the book. Yeah. On the whole, I think I really do enjoy YA more than this whole adult shit. Well, in terms of dystopia, or yeah. um, 
Because, I mean, like, that that was my point. It's kind of really hard to make a grand sweeping gesture by way of allegory about society anymore. Yeah. I mean, The Hunger Games did it really well because it kind of hit on something new, this being reality shows, which didn't exist in Aldous Huxley's time. Mm -hmm. But even you look at something like Brave New World, which still feels like it has relevance because it has so much to do with, like, the society numbing you. Well, and also the Munsell and... Oh, Munsell is a, is a color chart. I used it in archaeology. Oh. It has a whole... It, it just pretty much has a shit ton of well, color Well, see, that's swatches. clever. Well, yeah, that's what I like the see, whole... See, okay, I'm trying to think of something <laughs> nice to say about this. And also the test. Yeah, like, I was just like, like, I gotta find something nice you to know say the, about this. He clearly thought a lot about this. No. I was just but, so unhappy. Um, and the test that they take, like, to determine what their, what their color percentage in, in mm -hmm. vision is, is the name of the guy who came up with, like, the colorblind test and shit. Oh, the Ishihara. Yeah. So, so you knew this, yeah, or you looked it up. No, I knew it. So you, you knew this, and I, I didn't, and I didn't really think about that. But that is that is clever. Now that I know that, see, I, I said a nice thing. <laughs> I said a nice thing about I mean, this book. I hated. I think that's what kept me going. Is that I did enjoy how much obvious thought he put into this world and may enforcing it to work mm -hmm. in this shtick. Well, I mean, I thought like the world in itself was not the problem. The problem was the way it was presented. I really wish Jane had not been the way she was. I mean, I, really I wish everything about the story. I mean, like, I hated the main character. It was so fucking hackneyed. Their way this, like, you know, strong female character. I'm a huge bitch. I need to be tamed. I'm sick of that. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And, and it was just like, from the second she's on screen, and like, the first thing she does is threaten to harm him, it's like, really? Really? Yeah. You've written how many books? And we're going here? How fucking hackneyed is that? And it's sexist as shit, mm. you know? We're taming the shrew again. We yeah. should be past this. I mean, that, and that would be fine if she was an interesting and well-rounded character, yeah. but she's not. And obviously, people, some people will disagree, and that's fine. But a compelling narrative is generally... And, like, you look at Dexter and Game of Thrones and Breaking Bad, and it's like, a compelling character is not someone who is good. Mm -hmm. A compelling character is a driven character. Yeah. And I I hold to this. I, I I that's why I like Game of Thrones. Everybody is very driven. Yeah. You know? And they're all differently driven and that's what makes it interesting. Like in this book there was like no single character that was driven. And in YA you tend to be very driven because it's like teenagers and they want, you know, they mm -hmm. want to find their place in society. They want to do the thing. They want to be the king, you know, whatever. I thought Jane was driven, like hackneyed though she was. Mm -hmm. And like one dimensional, and that but she was driven, but also there was a sense that she didn't appreciate the danger she was in because she's the lowest class mm -hmm. of she's a gray, they're, they're pretty much the slave class. Like, um, she's constantly pissing everyone off because she how, is the Kate Betonian strong female yeah, character. Yeah, everyone's always talking about how they can't wait till like they can throw her out to like to be rebooted, like, which is a thing in this world which, you know, ends up being something else. But but she has no concept of, because she's got it all figured out. So she has no fear of what they can throw at her. So there's no tension for her. So for her, there's no tension. So it's like, even though she's driven, there's no stakes. I Like I said, I, I liked it. I didn't want to gorge my eyes out afterwards. I went, hmm, that was all right. I, I can't, like, it's like sort of like one of those things where I kept thinking, like, I guess he's not bad at Writing. I am curious but to I, check out his other everything series. Everything I like about stories is absent. I mean, I'm interested in checking out his other series, which is like a new war fairy tale thing going on, or nursery rhyme thing. But I'll, I'll do that on my own. So next episode, I'm gonna stop saying next week because obviously we can't keep doing a schedule because hey, we're you know, bro, it <laughs> we're busy. What are you gonna do? Dem full time jobs. Yeah. So next episode, um, we're gonna be discussing the outline for Viridian Saga Book Two. But the next book thing. So so we're gonna be doing something special. Uh, episode after next, uh, we're actually gonna have a guest author who is uh, for realsies published author. Not that you self published or not really. Wait. She went through the agony of, you know, the industry, and this, that's that is her name is also Lindsay, and she wrote a book called The Art of Wishing, which is um, uh, YA, thank Christ, <laughs> paranormal <laughs> romance type thing, um, and it's it is uh, I'm told it's about genies, so mm. I want to do that one with Lisa. Lisa's gonna be filling in for Nella. Yep. And uh, after that, yes, we will read the goddamn. 
Kardashian sister YA novel, and that is how I will punish you. And also down the pipe, um, I have an ARC of John Scalzi's new book, so we will probably I touch it. <laughs> go ahead and uh, yeah, he signed it for me. See, wait, go right Aww, I got a yeah, I got a signature from that thing that you didn't get to go to. Aww. Ooh, it has to do with highly contagious viruses. This is right up my alley. But we're gonna try something new after we do. The Art of Wishing, which will be uh, the next review, and of course the Kendall and Kylie Gen Jenner book. What was it? Rebels, colon, City of Indra, colon, the story of, like, it has two colons. And then uh, we'll, we're going to actually review a thing that has not uh, come out yet. So yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna review a thing before it comes Super out. Exciting. Like the real, like, <laughs> <laughs> like actual book Like reviewers. actual critics, it's exciting. <laughs> So um, yeah, so um, I hope you enjoyed my suffering, because <laughs> I'm going to enjoy yours. Till the next time.